What is up, my ninjas? This is the Humble Libertarian. Visit my website when you've got a minute, humblelibertarian.com, and be sure you put your email in that sidebar and click Get Email Updates. I send out one a week. And uh, subscribe to this channel if you want to hear more from me. Rand Paul made the news today, crossing party lines. The Kentucky Republican senator, the Tea Party senator, swept to Washington on a wave of anti-tax, anti-big government, anti-national debt, Tea Party sentiment back in 2010, has crossed party lines and endorsed a Libertarian Party candidate for the U.S. Senate, Gary Johnson running in New Mexico, who's out polling the Republican candidate already, has a ways to go to catch up to the Democrat, the incumbent, Martin Heinrich. Heinrich. That is the most Nazi-sounding name I've ever heard in my life. Martin Heinrich. Guys, I am not accusing Heinrich of being a Nazi. Please don't even start with me. I'm not doing that, but I'm just making a joke about his name. It's, that's a very German name, guys. Martin Heinrich. I can't think it. I can't read or think it without going Heinrich. Heinrich. So when I heard Gary Johnson was running for the race in the first place, a couple of weeks ago, Gary Johnson announces he's stepping in at this late hour and trying to go ahead and make a bid for the United States Senate. I I thought, okay, well, let me see what we're up against. Watched some videos, some YouTube videos of Heinrich just talking in Senate meetings, hearings and stuff. Phew! That guy is seriously handsome and charismatic and sounds pretty on top of things and articulate. He He's definitely very polished. He's a lot more polished than Gary Johnson. I was watching these videos going, oh my god. Oh no, this is going to be a tough battle. Because it doesn't matter really how principled you are a lot of times. Being polished can make all the difference. And uh, it doesn't matter what you're actually going to do in government, what your record is, what your agenda is. Uh, people, I think people increasingly are looking at those things, actually. We're getting a, a lot smarter every day. And people, and the information's just more available. And people are starting to, starting to actually dig a little bit into, you know, uh, maybe I can go check out and see who donates money to these candidates. I can go to Open Secrets and see the FEC records, the public donation records from the FEC, and see which industries and which companies are donating the most to these candidates. Maybe I can go check out their voting record, you know, maybe see how they voted on actual things, actual bills, and uh, do a little research. Instead of just kind of seeing a couple clips of him on television and going, ooh, that guy, he looks polished, and he's the same party I am. I guess I'm voting for him. Oh, I just like this candidate because I, I just love Jesus, and he just loves Jesus too. I'm voting for Huckabee. You know, it's just that surface level attitude is, I think, actually on the wane, encouragingly enough. But it's still it's still out there for sure. It's it's something to be reckoned with. <laughs> Gary Johnson is seriously let me back up a step. Gary Johnson in this race, this Senate race in New Mexico, is seriously the best shot the Libertarian Party has ever had of establishing a beachhead in Washington, D.C. There's never been a candidate more credible, more well-credentialed, more serious, with a high rec name recognition, you know, like a 96% name recognition. He was the governor of the state of New Mexico for two years. In New Mexico in the 90s, he was a very popular governor. 
So high name recognition and high popularity. To have somebody like that running, I mean, for the presidency, it's just still not enough. It's just not. The last time a third-party candidate won a U.S. presidential election was Abraham Lincoln when the Republican Party was a third party at the time. And those were weird times. And that was 150 years ago. Not saying now isn't a weird time either, but I, I dare say those times were weirder than even now. A lot weirder. And it's been 150 years and nothing, nothing like that's ever happened since. The closest to it, of course, was Ross Perot in 1992. And even he was not able to come close to the vote totals of the two main party candidates, Republicans and Democrats. And now they won't even let a third party candidate on the debate stage. They won't even, they learned from that election. They're not even going to put them on TV um, on the same stage. They know better than that. But this is winnable. I mean, this is so winnable. It's amazing to see something like this happen. It's a perfect storm or an eclipse or whatever, however you want to think of it. It's a perfect alignment of a credible candidate with a winnable office. If the Libertarian Party can't move right now, I mean, they, have, they really do have no will to win because this, if there were ever a time for Libertarian Party members to make their move, now would be it. I'm not a member, by the way, in full disclosure, of the Libertarian Party, and I never have been. I've never been a registered member of any party. I've always been independent. So, I'm not biased in that regard. I am a Libertarian, lowercase l. I believe in limited government, very limited government. And I think for the most part, any problem you can possibly imagine that you think government's going to solve, government will find a way to make it so much worse and create several other problems trying to solve it. Because government is not very delicate, you know? government tries to accomplish its ends with a damn hammer just going around knocking things around it's it throws its weight around and it's a it's a big thing it's very forceful it's a blunt force trauma instrument and when governments try to go in and make changes to society what what a lot of people don't understand is that Things are far more complex than they seem. Everything you see is the tip of the iceberg and goes so much deeper than what you think you see and what you think you understand. The world and human beings are incredibly complex. And human society, our economies our psychology, how everything is all interrelated is incredibly, maybe unfathomably complex and nuanced. So when you want to make changes, the best way to do it is as delicately as possible, as conservatively as possible. And government is not conservative. It's certainly not that. It's radical. It's very radical. And so they think they can go in and, well, we'll just, we'll just force people to do something we want. We'll just make things the way we think they ought to be. 
They have no idea all of the unseen things that they're affecting with each law they pass and all the unintended consequences that happen and the perverse incentives that they create. So I'm very much a libertarian. My website's The Humble Libertarian. And again, I I, I highly recommend you go visit. Of course I do, right? I highly recommend you visit HumbleLibertarian.com and subscribe to my email list. And uh, click around. Take a look around. Read some of my articles and then, and then decide maybe if you want to subscribe to my email list. But I'm not a member of the Libertarian Party. And in a lot of ways, I'm skeptical. Uh, I mean, I'm skeptical of all politics. Highly skeptical of all politics and the entire political paradigm. Including even somewhat radical libertarian elements that want to change how government works and limit government and uh, say a lot of things I agree with I'm highly skeptical all the time because you know the Republican Party has spoken in the same terms as the Libertarian Party for decades less government more freedom lower taxes Free markets are the best. Government is the problem. And we haven't had the results that they've promised. They get sucked into the the gravity well of the state and its inertia. So I'm very skeptical. But, you know, here's some unsolicited advice. You know how much that's worth, but here's my advice. If libertarians are serious about being libertarians, I'm referring to party members here. If LP members are serious about the LP, this is your chance. If there was ever a time to make a move, it would be right now. It would absolutely, you've never had anybody this good running for a seat this winnable that's this substantial, a U.S. Senate seat. And if you can't pull together and de- and win this one, man, I think it's just time to go ahead and throw in the towel on the LP altogether. I mean, this. I mean, this. I mean, what's the point if you're not going to try? If you're not going to try your absolute damnedest to win this, you know, what are you even doing? That's what I think. It'll be exciting to see. I feel like this could happen. I think this could... Rand Paul's endorsement is certainly stunning and also true to form. Paul is a master of statecraft. He toes the line so so admirably between the irrelevance of going along with all of it the status quo and compromising with it and speaking the language of liberty and talking the talk but not really walking the walk at all afraid to rock the boat he does a great job of towing the line between that extreme on the one side of irrelevance and being irrelevant the other way like kind of like his dad was for most of his career in congress where you just kind of you know you don't you don't work with the other people you have to work with and you're maybe too radical to really get anything done um, at the margins and I think Rand Paul does you know and it's like we could have a we could have a, a, a long discussion about if this incrementalism is point pointless or the only way it's possible and you know we could talk for we could have a beer and talk for two hours about it and uh, those are some conversations I'd like to have with some people I may do a podcast and start having guests or something because these are some conversations I, I, I just enjoy having but 
you know, Rand Rand takes as much as he he knows he can get away with. And this is one of those instances. Since uh, Gary Johnson's already out polling the Republican anyway, you know, it's a safe move. Paul won't risk anybody in the GOP getting too angry at him when the Republican isn't even uh, maybe in play. You know, when he's running against an incumbent Democrat, the seat looks pretty safe for him. Maybe the only way of unseating the Democrat and at least diminishing the Democrats' power in the Senate chamber would be to put, go full force behind Gary Johnson. So it's it's a smart move. But see, it's one that most Republicans, most Republican senators would be afraid to do because they're just such scared, scared Little cowards, man. Politicians are such, such skittish, scared, fearful, fearful people. Always afraid of the voters, always afraid of other politicians. It's got to be a horrible way to live, man. But, uh, Paul's a giant. He is. Rand Paul is absolutely a giant of our age, and he is not afraid to do something that's actually a, 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 a very calculated, probably pretty safe risk. But most Republican senators won't do it. They just won't do something like that. And that's why they're boring and irrelevant. And that's why Rand Paul's interesting and relevant. A lot of people don't like him because they feel like he gives too much. I wasn't so happy with him for switching his opinion on the confirmation of Mike Pompeo coming out against him as hard as he did and then saying, well, I had a phone call with I had a phone call with Donald Trump and he promised me we're getting out of Afghanistan. So so I'm going to confirm Pompeo. It's like, dude, he promised all of us on a stage with cameras in his face and mics in his face some stuff that he hasn't done. You know? He told us we'd be scaling back a lot of the war stuff. And he's actually ramped up a lot of it. Sent more troops to Afghanistan. You know? He was criticizing these wars. And, uh... He's kind of gone the other way. He hasn't gone the other way as far as I was worried he would. He's actually been more tempered than I was worried he'd be, but... A private promise to one senator in a private conversation. You think he might break that? I, I wasn't there on the phone call, so I don't know, Rand. I, I, maybe I'm giving you a too hard a time, and he, you know, he's got a hard job. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'd do in his shoes. He's playing it pretty well, though. I am impressed. I got to say that. At least I admire him. At least I do respect uh, the way he plays the game. So it'll be interesting to see. I would love to see Gary Johnson and Rand Paul tag teaming each other in and out of filibusters. <laughs> Rand goes for six hours, man. And Gary Johnson just like taps him out of the ring, goes and takes a pee break, scarfs some food down, drinks some water. Gary Johnson talks for six hours. Rand tags him out. They go like that for five days straight, hold up the entire federal government over something important. Man, that would be awesome. God, that would be so cool. Can you do that? Can you tag team? Other senators in and out? I think senators can bring motions to the floor anytime they want. There aren't all the same rules as with representatives, and they can talk for as long as they want. So I bet they could do that, man. They could just tag each other in and out, man. Maybe get Mike Lee in on the action.
be pretty cool. Well, folks, I appreciate you listening to my video, my audio, and I'm going to keep making more of these. And if uh, this grows and more people are listening, maybe I'll do video. But for now, it's just uh, it's just beyond my capacity to to try and produce as much as I'd like and make it video. So thanks for listening. Subscribe and visit my website sometime and I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one.